I'm part of the Africa Energy Futures Project, and I'm my portion is looking at power pools in Africa and um, the benefits from linking up the different power systems across the continent, both um, regional power pools and then the potential to link up the four major regional power pools in sub-Saharan Africa and capture some of the synergies between um, the high, major hydro basins and how the benefits from linking these systems might change in the face of climate change where some of these hydro basins may ch um, alter how their, um, the seasonality of their inflows. I think um, MIT obviously has a lot of great people, a lot of great resources and tools, but we don't want to make up problems. We want to work on issues that are real and that matter to people. And so by working with someone like you and you, Wider, who's really involved on the ground in places like um, South Africa, we can put our skills towards a project that's meaningful to people on the ground. There's been a lot of excitement about power pools in terms of we could save money, um, we can coordinate our planning, but no one's really looking longer term at how might the benefits that are there right now change in 50 years with climate change. Maybe it makes sense to link up all these hydro basins right now, but in 30 years, if they all sync up and they're all having a drought at the same time or flooding at the same time, then some of the benefits may, may no longer be there. International power pools are hard. They take decades to actually develop. Even though everyone can see the benefits and talk about the benefits, um, you're always facing this conflict between getting the benefits from regional integration, but also wanting to maintain national sovereignty and security of supply at the national level. Um, and it really requires a lot of political will and um, consensus between the countries. And that's, that's always the biggest barrier, and it always takes um, a long time to overcome that barrier. I think in order for, in addition to this political will component, in order for a power pool to actually function efficiently and capture some of these proposed benefits, um, there are really four key conditions that you have to have. You have to have sufficient generating capacity so that countries are actually willing to trade. Um, what we're seeing here in South Africa is that as soon as there were shortages, um, ESCOM had to renegotiate their contracts because they didn't want to export power when they couldn't meet demand locally. Um, so you have to have enough generating capacity. You have to have enough transmission capacity so that people are actually able to trade power across um, these cross-border networks. You have to have regional grid codes and market rules so that everyone has a level playing field and they all understand the rules. And then you need to have regional institutions, meaning a regional regulator who can enforce the rules and a regional market operator and system operator who can um, coordinate between all the different countries.